this is a short video that I hope helps you understand the main steps in conducting a systematic review. So first of all, I would like to clarify that in a systematic review, we're going to search for all primary evidence on a specific topic. And by primary evidence, I mean the actual clinical studies that were conducted in patients, either randomized control studies or cohort studies or case control studies. At the end, we're going to summarize all this evidence and hopefully we're going to find and analyze the findings in an overall result. Therefore, we cannot include another review in this review. We cannot include systematic reviews or meta-analysis in our systematic review. Systematic reviews only can include primary evidence or primary studies. So in order to conduct our systematic review, we first need to identify the knowledge gap. What information or evidence is missing on a specific topic or disease that you need to inform your clinical practice? So after you have identified your knowledge gap, you need to build your research question with a specific format that will allow you to set your eligibility criteria. Usually this question is in the PICO format, which is mainly done for interventional studies. Nevertheless, there are other types of review that will assess diagnostic accuracy or prevalence, and each type of these studies will have a different specific question format. So this is the PICO format that I'm sure you're all very um, familiar with with P being population, I intervention, C comparator, and O the outcome. As you can see in this slide, here's a list of different types of reviews and the different type of uh, question formats that are used with uh, each systematic review. To conduct effectiveness uh, reviews, you can use a PICO question, or for instance, prevalence, you, you use the COCOPOP question, or diagnostic test accuracy reviews, you will use the PERT uh, format question, and so on. So please identify the type of review that you're going to do in order to select the type of question you're going to have. So once you have identified your research question in the PICO format, you need to make sure that there is not a systematic review that has been already published on this topic. On this topic. For this, you will check different databases and the PROSPER database, which is a systematic review protocol registry. So if you find a review that has already been published, um, what you need is to see if maybe this review is out of date and there's probably new evidence that has been published that needs to be included. Also, you can check if it was uh, not well conducted method methodologically or if maybe it has some different eligibility criteria compared to the one you want to do. If any of these are true, then you can do your systematic review. After you have uh, defined your research question, you will need to develop uh, the protocol. For this, you need to define your eligibility criteria. So for the eligibility criteria, you need to, need to set every single of these items. What are the pop which is the population you're going to include? It's like adults, children, intervention. What intervention? Is it a specific drug? Is it IV? Is oral, for instance? So if you're going to assess the effect of uh, steroids on pneumonia, what you need to say is, are you going to include all steroids? You're going to include only hydrocortisone or dexamethasone? Is it going to be IV or oral? Um, and so on. You also need to specify the comparator and the specific outcome. You can see uh, some systematic reviews can look for different outcomes and you need to set that uh, in the protocol and in the eligibility criteria. Usually it's mortality, length of stay, I don't know, need for intubation, you, um, but you need to specifically set which is the outcome you're going to look for. The setting is um, are, patient, are the studies that you're going to include be conducted in the emergency department, in the ICU, ambulatory patients, you need to define also what study designs you're going to include. And this is going to depend basically on what is the evidence that is available today. So in some topics, you may, have, you may find several or many randomized controlled uh, trials of well, um, well conducted. So in this case, you should always choose the best available quality of evidence, which would be the randomized controlled trials. And you're probably not going to include the cohort studies unless you're also looking 
for an outcome that takes a long time to develop. So you might want to include cohort studies to assess for these long-term outcomes that a randomized control study will not include. Um, also, if you have very few randomized control trials with, some, with uh, small sample sizes, you probably need uh, to include the cohort studies that are large and well-conducted to have some evidence. So it basically depends on the topic and what you want. Um, for the language, you need to decide if you're going to include all languages or you're going to restrict to English language, which probably will induce some uh, publication bias. And the time frame, uh, are you going to look for studies that have been publish, published uh, since ever, since the database inception, or are you going to update and you review and only going to include the uh, studies published in the last five years? So these you need to specify in your eligibility criteria. So now that you have that, you're going to go for your search strategy. You need to do some literature review and preliminary search that will give you some information on the different terms and possible different uh, populations or variations of your intervention or these settings to have a, a like an overall knowledge of this. Um, after that, so you need to decide where you're going to look for the studies. There's usually two main uh, sources of information. The one is uh, electronic databases, and the most common ones are Medline, which is from the United States, Embase from Europe, Central, which is Cochrane uh, database, Lilacs is a Latin American database, and Senile, which is a nursing and ally um, health database. And the second uh, main source is the supplementary search methods, which are other databases that will help you find probably gray literature that has not been fully published in journals. You are going to look for in citation indexes. Uh, the main one is uh, the Web of Science. In trial registries to find protocols that may be uh, so maybe you can find another, uh, the study that was published in another place by looking at the protocol. Conference proceedings to see maybe abstracts or posters that are presented in um, uh, congresses or conferences can help you find the evidence. Search engines like Google or Google Scholar. And at the end, you're always going to look for the reference uh, list of the included studies to see if maybe there was an, another study that you missed. So now that you have decided what's, uh, what are your information resources that you're going to look for, and this depends on the topic that you're going to review, you're also going to decide on the search terms. And you need to include MESH terms, which are medical subject headings, uh, and also you need to include free text words. And the reason is basically the MESH terms are manually assigned by somebody in the databases and very recent uh, publications may not be assigned yet when you do the search so you would be missing the recent publications and also there may be a mislabeling of the mesh term so you may miss an article because it was labeled with another mesh term and you didn't look for it so that's the reason you need to also look for free text words and you need to use connectors appropriately and truncation. So this is an example of uh, a, a, search, um, a search strategy. So usually it has, um, as you can see, it has a combination of mesh terms. And then all of these are just free text. This is another mesh term. And there's, here also you have mesh terms and free text. So basically, you can, you can look for terms for each of the concepts of your PICO format question, um, but it's not recommended to use terms for all the concepts. And that is because if you add terms here in population and terms here in the index test and here in the reference standard and here, and you combine all these, the number of studies that you're going to get are very low and you're going to decrease your recall and decrease your sensitivity. And the systematic review needs to be very sensitive and include all possible studies that are published. So you need to decide which are the probably mainly two concepts that are going to give you the most recall, the, 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 most, the, the highest number of studies. 
So in this case, it was the uh, ultrasound, which was the index test, and the target condition, which was the myocardial ischemia, and you combine the mesh and the um, free text words. So for each PICO concept, you should search the mesh term and all the free text terms connected with the OR connector. So for concept number one, you're going to use mesh term or free text one or free text two, and you're going to look for all of these. And then you're going to look for concept two in the same way. And then you're going to search both together, concept one, this search, and concept two, and you're going to add them with the connector and. So this is a, the final research strategy that was done. You can see this is the mesh term for ultrasonography. Then you have all the free text, and then you add one or two. So this is concept one. And then you have the mesh term, free text, and then you have or this or all of these here this is concept two and in this case there was a concept three probably because it was a very very high number of um, studies and they needed to be more uh, selective so they included a third term so at the end you have concept one concept two and concept three and you put them together with an and three and ten and nineteen so you finally have your 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 search you know the list of your search results and you have a number of studies for each database. So many of them, so you're gonna have search in, let's say, Medline and Embase. So you're gonna have uh, 3,000 in Medline and 4,000 in Embase. So many of them are gonna be duplicates. So they need to be removed. The duplicates need to be removed. And this is usually done automatically in reference citation managers or systematic review software. With the final list of results that have already the duplicates removed, you're going to start doing the first phase, which is actually the title and abstract screening, where you're going to look the as the name, the num, you know, the name says title and abstract of each of the studies. And you're going to see if it's potentially illegible. You need to maximize recall not to miss any study. Um, after screening, and you need to discard all of those that are not relevant to your review question. After screening all the studies, you are left with the ones that are potentially illegible, and you need to read the full text of those to decide if they actually need to be included or not. So this is called full text review, and it's like the final part uh, where you decide and you apply and to see if each of the study meets your eligibility criteria. Important to know is that these needs to be need to be duplicated. It means that it needs uh, that two independent reviewers do the title and abstract screening and two independent reviewers do the full text review. And this is because maybe you miss some, uh, some studies when you're doing the screening, you know, the title and abstract screening. So if by doing it both, you are assuring that no articles probably are gonna get missed and or also to the minimize bias, selection bias of the studies. So you can do this in an Excel file. You can do, you know, you can download your search of, you know, 5,000 studies in your Excel file and do one by one. But it, there's a, there's a, a few apps and software tools that are going to help you a lot in this process. These are a few um, software tools. There's Covidence, Ryan, uh, Cochrane Revman, and GBI Summary, JBI Summary, which is a Joanna Briggs Institute uh, tool. Uh, one of the best ones, I, I, in my own opinion, it's probably Covidence and, GB, and JBI, but there, pro, there, there is, um, there's a cost in Covidence. Ryan is also, is free. And Revman will not allow you to do full text and, and abstract screening. So each of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. So just, just so you are aware and get to know them before you start. Uh, this is a, an example of how Covidence will work. So once you have your search results, you will import all the references. So here you have like 9,000 articles you were imported. And now you start your title and abstract screening phase. So once you do that, it will give you the title and abstract of all the studies. And then you can just read the title and abstract and decide yes, no, very quickly. And it will just go, go, go. And both people can do it simultaneously. And at the end, you can decide if there were any conflicts or there were disagreements between both of you and you know, resolve them. This is Ryan. 
it's the same. It will give you the title. Here's the title, the abstract, and then just the uh, click to include or exclude. So finally, you have both agree in which are which studies are going to be included after the title and after abstract screening and full text review. And you're going to have your Prisma flow diagram, which is going to tell you how many studies came from Medline, from Embase, from Cochrane Central, and how many were record, uh, how many duplicates were removed, um, how many you know records were excluded after screening, how many records were excluded after full text review. And also how many records were uh, detected and included after, you know, your supplementary search methods. Um, so let's say you have, you know, at the end, just 20, 20 studies that were included in your review, uh, that you're going to include in your review. Now you need to start your data extraction. You're going to actually extract each uh, variable that you need from each study. So you need to make a data extraction form. Uh, that you can make it in an Excel form, which is actually pretty easy to do as well. Or you can use the software tools that can, uh, most of them can just edit your form to extract the data. Um, and you're going to need to extract the, uh, all the variables that will give you characteristics of the population, the, meth the methods of the study, what is the intervention and, and the results? How many people die? How many patients died in the intervention arm? How many patients died in the uh, placebo or control arm? So at the end, you can actually summarize the results. And it, can, it also has to be done in duplicate, so there are no mistakes. Uh, here are some, um, here's an extraction template from Covidence, but as I said, I was saying, you can also do this in Excel. After doing extraction of the data, you need to assess those 20 studies that you had at the end for quality assessment. Um, you need to see if these studies are at high, low, or unclear risk of bias. Um, and this will help you assess how confident you are in that the estimated results that you're going to find are actually a reflection of the true results and to make possible recommendations based on the strength of the evidence. Uh, there's several tools that you can use to assess uh, risk of bias. And a different tool is usually uh, appropriate for each uh, study design. So for uh, randomized controlled trials, you can use the ROB2 tool. It's, it was designed by Cochrane. Also the Robbins for cohort studies or the Quetas tool for diagnostic accuracy studies. And there's different, also, there, there are different uh, other tools that you can use. Uh, and it also has to be done in duplicate for two, by two independent reviewers. So you have to agree on the final judgment of the quality of the study. Once you have done the quality of the studies, you will, you will do this graph that you probably have seen in uh, systematic reviews that have been published. It's basically the risk of bias summary table and graph. It will give you a visual abstract of all the low risk of bias in green, high risk of bias in red and unclear in yellow and how, how, you know, how many of them are high or low or unclear risk of bias. Uh, this is, and this website, you can do this, this is free and it's uh, giving you the way to do this uh, graphs. At the end, you will summarize all the results and interpret the findings. So in the context of the level of evidence and the clinical implications that they have, if you find it appropriate, you can do a meta-analysis and this discussion for another uh, video or class uh, when you should do a meta-analysis and when not. But if you're going to do the meta-analysis, basically is uh, combining the results of all the studies statistically so you get an overall summary result. Uh, not all systematic reviews uh, can have a meta-analysis. You can also present your uh, summary find your findings in you know text and explain the differences between each studies and all your results and the interpretation of these results. So I hope this was kind of helpful. And if you have uh, any you know questions or doubts, just please you know contact me. I'm available. So bye.